the platform survives so that the platform evolves instead of being replaced every 12 months or every 36 months in this case. And the idea is to bring down that time to market from 36 to 39 months to 12 months and bring the car industry on par to what consumers are expecting, which is we have all these cell phones in our cars, in our hands, and we all put them on the dashboard of our cars, and we do that because of the functionality. And so we want to bring all of that, those capabilities and that functionality to the car industry using a single ubiquitous uh, standard, which is AGL. So I'm going a little retro. Um, when I was preparing for this presentation, I uh, was looking at old slides, and I was looking at um, ALS 2015, where I was on this stage uh, at ALS giving a keynote. And uh, I, I found the slide so interesting and in how far we've come that I decided I was going to share that with you today. So let's go back in time. Back in 2015, um, at the very first all-member meeting, uh, which was hosted at Toyota facility in February 2015, we had four OEMs. It was a good start. We had Honda, JLR, Nissan, and Toyota that were members. Um, fast forward to today. We have 10 automotive manufacturers. So that's a huge accomplishment, and it's a great sign for AGL. The show of support by these manufacturers has been tremendous. Go back in time, this is an actual slide that I showed at the ALS 2015 keynote. We had 55 members, we were doing okay. Fast forward to today, we now have 98 members. And as I said earlier, what's really nice about the membership type is that we're not only seeing OEMs and suppliers, those are obviously um, uh, you know, a no-brainer in terms of they should be joining. But now we're seeing companies like Oracle and SAP and, and telecom companies wanting to be part of this ecosystem in order to be part of the connected car evolution, which includes a whole backend for over-the-air software upgrades, for security, for all of this stuff. So we're seeing a whole mix of different companies joining AGL for those reasons now. Go back in time to AMM 2015. Um, we had only 25 companies present. We thought that was really good for the very first AMM. Our last AMM in February, we had 230 people across 56 different companies across 14 countries. So you can see the momentum building over the past two years. Go back in time to 2015. Um, we didn't have our own code base. In fact, we were building AGL software on top of Tizen IDI, which was a separate open source project. Um, that was fine for the time, but really, we wanted to be in control of our own destiny. So we decided to uh, build our own software base called Unified Code Base. So fast forward to today, we've had three very successful releases since J uh, January 2016. And for those who don't know, we name our releases after Fish. Uh, that was an idea that uh, Walt Miner, our community manager, uh, came up with. Um, and we think it's cool because it's an open source project. Um, so we've had three very successful releases. And now the industry is starting to rely on us to have a release every six months. So now companies can make product plans. They can make deployment plans based on knowing that every six months a new AGL release will be coming out. This has led to a very healthy community. If you look at our numbers in terms of the growth of our community, we have over 750 developers now on the AGL uh, primary mailing list. And as I've said before, I think this is a key metric of how healthy an open source project is in terms of developers, in terms of people sharing ideas, in terms of people collaborating together. And so very healthy, we have 750 developers, 27% growth in the past four months, uh, over 1,200 um, people on the mailing list in general across the AGL mailing list. And in terms of activity, um, we've really grown, as you can see, uh, from 2004 we had almost no activity on the mailing list, to nearly uh, 1,800 uh, posts last year. And already this year, we're seeing, uh, we're going to eclipse that. We have 6.7 uh, posts per day. So our community is extremely well uh, supported and it's very active. Developers are helping each other on a daily basis. 
and there's really quality technical discussions happening on those mailing lists. So we've come a long way, and uh, it's my belief that maybe the DeLorean went to the future and came back with AGL software. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> um, okay, so our first announcement today is that um, we're announcing our UCB 4.0 release, which is Daring Dab. Um, release candidate one is available today. Um, and the final release, we're going to go through a couple iterations of dot releases to fix bugs. Uh, stabilization and our final release will be uh, July 22nd. Um, so uh, look out for that. And then finally, the big announcement that I have today is that we're announcing that AGL is in the 2018 Toyota Camry. It's a huge accomplishment. Come on. <laughs> So this will be rolling out uh, late summer 2017. Um, the Lexus uh, line will follow uh, shortly after. Um, so what we're planning around this uh, today is that we have a press release. So be on the lookout for that. That'll be uh, uh, going out this afternoon. We have a press conference that's uh, not open to the public, unfortunately, but we will have a press conference uh, later today um, where we have uh, Forbes, Wall Street Journal, CNET, Reuters, Bloomberg, all attending this, so this is big news, and we hope to get really good coverage for AGL. Uh, and then finally, uh, come and see the uh, Toyota keynote um, tomorrow by uh, Kenichi Murata. He will be giving all the details on exactly uh, what is being released, and I'm going to save that part for him because I don't want to steal his show. <laughs> Um, in addition to this, we also have uh, a real Toyota vehicle demo outside the building today. Um, now this is a pre-production demo, so you will not see the actual Camry. It's actually a Lexus with an AGL demo connected to it, but it shows the real functionality, for example, the CAN bus being read, all of the uh, features from the car being transmitted to the infotainment system in real time, and the full uh, CAN bus uh, data available to AGL. Um, so this demo is available outside. Uh, you go down the escalators, go around the back of the building, and um, it will be available there. Uh, the demo is available during the breaks and the lunch. <coughs> and um, please keep in mind that the demo will be there Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So if the line is very long, the venue has asked us to uh, keep the lines short to, for safety reasons. So please remember that there will be other opportunities over the next three days to go see the demo. Um, I'd also like to remind everyone that although we've been talking about infotainment because that has really been the pain point for automotive manufacturers in terms of catching up to the mobile phone in terms of features, functionality, and um, infotainment obviously is a huge part of what we're doing, but part of our charter and scope of AGL goes beyond just infotainment. Um, we're also planning solutions for instrument cluster and heads-up display. Um, we're also planning uh, a solution for telematics, meaning a headless profile. Uh, in fact, there's work going on right now at AGL where we're redefining our architecture and layers so that we can properly support a headless profile. Headless profile means that it runs on uh, lower performance chip, uh, chips that are um, uh, uh, much less expensive and also uh, don't need a display and graphics and, and all of the things that you'd expect in an infotainment system. So that is also coming from AGL. And then finally, part of our uh, roadmap, in fact, the board of directors discussed this yesterday, is functional safety. Um, we want to start a project to build the requirements out for functional safety in ISO 26262 um, and see where that takes us and whether we can use the Linux kernel for that or whether we need some other solutions. Um, so we'll see, we'll, we're going to launch that project. And then also uh, advanced driver assistance and eventually autonomous driving. That's all part of the AGL scope. And we want to be in every processor in the car. We want to be in every function in the car. So I want to conclude with this. We have 98 AGL members. Uh, based on the data that I pulled from the registration uh, for this event, we have 223 companies. 
So what are the rest of you waiting for? <laughs> um, join us. This, this is really taking off. This, this project is like no other. It's really taking off. We're going to be on the roads. We're going to be uh, in, in multiple cars in the future. Um, this is here to stay. AGL is for real. AGL is where the future is. In fact, I was really happy to see this morning, Forbes magazine sent out a tweet. I don't know if some people saw it. They said, uh, quote, forget about Apple, Google, and Tesla. AGL is where it's at. That was the quote. Check it out from Forbes magazine this morning. So very happy about that. So please join us. If you're not a member, come see me, and we'll make you a member. We'll uh, do this together. So thank you very much, everyone, for your attention. Okay, so for our first keynote speaker, I'd like to introduce uh, Hidenori Suzuki, President and Representative Director for NTT Data MSC Corporation. Suzuki-san has promoted full-scale entry into the automotive field and drives to expand the business field in the target area of automotive, IoT, and products. Now please help me to welcome Suzuki-san.